to think of the right ventricular outflow tract view as a mid-sagittal view of the thoracic spine. Now again, for the sonographers in the audience, this is a similar plane of section to the longitudinal view of the T-spine. Now, if I were to say, please go in and get me a longitudinal view of the thoracic spine, uh, on the way to the scanning room, uh, you might think to yourself, yeah, I don't know if I can get it. I might be able to get it. I might not be able to get it. But the last thing on your mind is, what's the plan? You already know the plan to get a longitudinal view of the thoracic spine. It's practically inborn in our brain. Now, your next question might be, wait a second, Dr. Philly. You've been telling us that if we want to get the right ventricular outflow tract view, uh, the flow of blood is going toward the left shoulder. Well, that is true in you, and it's true in me, and it's true in children, but it's not true in the fetus. Because in a fetus, the lungs are completely atelectatic. And when the lungs are atelectatic, the hemidiaphragms elevate, but they don't elevate uniformly. At the attachment points of the diaphragm, that point is relatively fixed. So it is the cupola of the hemidiaphragm that rises, and as it rises, it elevates the apex of the heart. And thus, the right ventricular outflow tract ends up lining up reasonably close to a mid-sagittal plane. Now, here, the sonographer is trying to get me a longitudinal view of the thoracic spine, and to be perfectly honest, she did a bang-up job. That's a beautiful view of the longitudinal thoracic spine. But what else did I get? I got nearly a perfect right ventricular outflow tract view. Now, for the uh, radiologists and obstetricians in the audience, I cannot make this point too strongly. Take every opportunity to assess cardiac anatomy. So it happens on this thoracic spine view that I got a beautiful REOT tract view. So I need to evaluate that to see if I think it's normal. Well, it's normal. So do not sit there waiting for the picture to show up that has R-V-O-T inscribed on it. Every time you have an opportunity to evaluate the heart and the great arteries, take that opportunity. Take a look and see, does anything here not look quite right? Here we're looking at three cine clips. And what I want you to do here is to look at the thoracic spine. When the thoracic spine looks the best to you, look up at the heart and see what you see. And in each instance, you will see that when the thoracic spine is lined up, you have pretty close to a perfect RVOT tract view. And certainly good enough to make all of the observations that we wanted to make. The RVOT tract view is also often the same plane of section as the profile view. Now, we're not required to get the profile view by the AIUM ACR ACOG guidelines. Nonetheless, I don't have to tell you that every sonographer that does obstetrical sonogram spends a considerable period of time during the examination trying to get that profile view so that the mother can bond with the fetus. I'm not opposed to that. That's a great idea. But for the radiology, radiology group and the obstetrical group watching this lecture, notice that we also get a very nice RVOT tract view at that time. So again, I cannot make this point too strongly. Yes, you're going to evaluate the profile on that view for normalcy, but every time you get an opportunity to evaluate the arteries, the great arteries, and the heart, take that opportunity. Finally, remember that we said the right ventricular outflow tract view is orthogonal to the LVOT tract view. So for the sonographers watching this, when you've got your LVOT 
T-track view, your next thought should be, I need to look at my hand. I need to see the orientation of my transducer. I need to compute the exact 90 degree angle to that and you may be rewarded with a perfect right ventricular outflow track. 